We talked about the John Bullock stuff, what he's done with John Bullock from the very beginning, what he did with uh, having Javin Wright get injured and not be able to play, uh, having McKay, McKay Bayer step up, having Stephen Thompson be able to step up. All those and they have not missed a beat what I'm from saying. last year. Yeah. 45, 40, 35, 40, he's gonna go. It's time people feel us. Big Red Junkies. Day by day, day by day. We get better and better. If we die, we die. Man, it's over the child in that. Put him in the aisle. Bring that trophy back to Lincoln. First half is over. First half is over, and we are talking... On to the future. Superlatives. No, we're not on the future yet. That's next. That's tomorrow. That's true. That's true. I apologize. We are talking superlatives first half. Uh, most impressive, most disappointing, uh, and who our MVPs were for the first half here. Uh, I'm going to kick this one off by going with Matt over here to just give me your most negatively surprising player of the first half. So most disappointing? Like single most disappointing Single most. Player? Single most. I want to hear it overall. Uh, whoever our long snapper is. <laughs> That's well, the we've guy. Had, really? We've had okay. two of them. Either one. They've both been awful. They, there's Again, there's a reason why I was trying to fight for the long snapper position being on our top 50 most important people <laughs> list at the beginning of the season. Well, it wouldn't have mattered who we put on there, apparently. It, but I just wanted the position to be on there because it was going to be important. To, uh, this is like two years re- ago when Jed was like, Look, I'm scared of the defensive line. And what <laughs> happened? <laughs> you, were, okay. you, were, you were right as fuck. <laughs> In the first half of this season, everybody's done pretty much what I expect them to outside of some rush outside of some rush blocking on the offensive line. And so I think there are some improved players. I think there are some players that regressed a little bit. But overall, the most disappointing thing has been our special teams. And botched snaps are a big part of it. So that's what I'm going with. Jed? Uh, I'm going to go with, I can go with the a position group. Also, but- you started this off on a very negative note. I wanted to get the negativity out we of the way. We should like sandwiched this stuff. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Sandwich some shit in there. No, because and something it's about fun to get end. fun. Well, it's about to, to get fun. To be fair, if you sandwich it in the negativity, in the, usually the good stuff's in the middle. So. Yeah, you don't want to eat a shit sandwich. You can throw the top bun away if it's moldy. Fucking weird. You start great. <laughs> you start great. You, you hit a bit. You dip and you end great. You guys are, it's like you never done podcasting before. Uh, <laughs> just in case you guys were wondering, you've probably never heard us say it before, but we are not professionals. No. They're not professionals. Um, <laughs> I'm a professional. Look at my betting stats. It's great. In the show. Not in real life because it ain't that good, Kim. Uh, my betting stats are better in real life than yours right now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's talk about your fantasy football team. Uh, let's not talk about my fantasy football team. <laughs> yeah, nobody, literally nobody cares about your fantasy football team. Uh, <laughs> including myself right now. They're yeah. that bad. So anyway, Jed. Uh, I, I kind of think that I'm going to go defense, which is going to be kind of surprising as far as disappointing side of it. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed in the safety play. What, whether you want to go Deshaun Singleton or Malcolm Hartsog. I know Malcolm Hartsog has a couple of interceptions, but they were both literally him just kind of standing in the right place at the right time. Granted, he could have done that on purpose. I get it. But I'm going to more just go to Deshaun Singleton. I don't think he's playing the way that I, I expected him to be playing. I'm not going to sit here and say that he's playing terribly because he's he's done pretty good in the run game. But coverage-wise, he's leaving a lot to be desired out there. Um, you know, we talked about the See, same. If, if I was, was going to pick between those two specifically, I would go with Hartzog. Okay. He, has two, he has two interceptions, which makes it, for a lot of people, it washes a lot of bad away. Mm-hmm. But he's also given up, I think, three of our like five t- total passing touchdowns we've given up on the season. Like the guy just has been, hasn't been very good in coverage at all. He falls down constantly. Actually, and I'm looking at it right here on Pro Football Focus. He has given up three touchdowns, and that's mo- the yeah. most of the, on the team. That's that's rough. He yeah. gave up our first two of the season. I know that for sure. Um, so I, I mean, not to tell you you're wrong no, about your pick. You're but good. You're good. Singleton at least hasn't stood out to me. It's kind of like the what Rule's been talking about with Gatula. If you don't notice him, 
Yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not doing bad. The, the, the reason why I'm taking Singleton over Hartzog is because I w- I had questions with Hartzog going into the season as far as how effective he was going to be. I wasn't sure if he was going to be the mainstay there or not, or if he was going to get moved around. We talked about him possibly going to cornerback safety back and forth. We didn't really know for sure. Yeah, that Sean Singleton was a guy that we he, he came in, uh, you know, last year a little bit injured or coming off of an injury. And we expected he so flashed much from last him. Year early. He did flash last, and now having his one, you know, another big year just by himself, being able to play from the very beginning. And I thought he was going to flash a whole lot more this year, and he hasn't really been. So that that's kind of my one disappointment is on the season so far. As far as my, uh, if I, I guess, I, I'm picking the side of the ball that is the most impressive, but the one glaring weak spot of our defense, I believe, is our safety play. The guy that I'm going to go with is somebody that I really expected to take a next step forward, and especially when they decided to redshirt Malachi Coleman and not Mal- redshirt Jalen Lloyd. I thought that that signaled that he was going to be a major integral part of our offense, and he just simply hasn't been mm-hmm. so far. Um, he has not looked electric speed-wise. He's not taken the top off the defense like we were accustomed to seeing last year, which was where he made his bread and butter. Uh, it almost feels like Ja'Cory Barney's kind of taken that spotlight from him. Um, I mean, he he doesn't have, he has six catches for 181 yards. He's averaging 30.2 per catch. That's great numbers. But I feel like he's leaving a lot out there on the field that he could be giving So us. kind of like with what you did with mine, I'm going to go a little bit against what you just said there because <laughs> Do you, know, you say that he hasn't really been able to take the top off the defense when, again, you literally just said the number. He's averaging 30 yards a catch which is kind of taking the top off the defense. The thing is, that's fair. He literally I remember one of those was from a from a uh, fake punt. But he also only gets one catch a game. He, this Rutgers game was the first game as, in his entire career that he had more than one catch in a game. That's fair. So to be to be fair, I just mean how he's, it's disappointing to me cuz I thought he was going to take a step I forward. I get it. it. I mean, it's kind of like with what I said about Deshaun yeah, uh, Singleton. Singleton. I thought he was going to take a step forward and he hasn't. Jalen I I would agree in that aspect of the Jalen yeah. thing. It's just it's a surprise to me. Yeah. I don't want to beat I don't want to beat him up cuz no. He's still a major major part of the offense and he's going to grow. He's only going to be better. Um and he's undersized compared to our other guys that are out there that are going to get more targets. Mm-hmm. So That's all I had on the negative side of things. Yep. Cuz we're not doing both sides of the ball for that, but we are going to do both sides of the ball when it comes to the positives. Um, who's your most surprising positive player this year on the offensive side of the ball? By the way, we're just going to go ahead and throw out there right now disclaimer. This show is not a Dylan Riola show. It very easily could be for everything offensive. I think everybody and their mom knows that Dylan Riola has been our most impressive and MVP on the offense. We're going to try and keep it to something else. Yeah, I think. Dylan Rayola would be the number one pick. For all pretty of, much all, all of us, us would say Dylan Rayola and, and so this move is, on. This so. is not even our MVP. I'm talking most surprising, positive surprise on the offensive side. I'm taking Ja'Cory Barney, and I'm taking him strictly from an eye test. It's, 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 you it's stole not, mine. Well, you let me go first. <laughs> it's true. You're going to make me go first? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I can. Um, he Dude is fast as fuck. I mean, oh God, I, I don't know what to say. He, he, he pivots quick. He cuts quick. And when he gets out in open space, he he closes down fast, and so um, he doesn't have you know eye popping yards, but all purpose yards, he looks pretty damn good, and he is a shocking true freshman yeah. for me. Yeah, he's got 19 catches for 149 yards, averaging 7.8. But I'll bet you anything, he has closer to like 500 yards behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that so, dude has got so, so many the freaking team reverse 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 yeah, he reverses a, and sweeps. Oh my god! He also has a hundred yards rushing and two touchdowns as far as running yeah. the ball. So like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's why it's all purpose yards. He looks yeah. pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah. And he, it's just fun to watch him with the ball in his hands. Kick, he, kick returns. He's looking decent too. Like yeah, yeah. He's been he's been absolutely lights out on that. Chad, who's your most surprising offensive guy? Ugh, it's it's hard not to uh, again. It's hard not to say Ja'Cory Barney if we're not going to say also say Dylan Rayola. So I'll try to pick somebody else. Um, I'm. I will say Emmett Johnson, only because I was not as high on him as I as other people were coming into the season. It's not that I thought that 
I thought he was down on the list of uh, running backs for this upcoming season. Um, the limited time that he's been able to get in there, which I now will firmly admit, I think it needs to be more, but he, you know, talk about lightning in a bottle. I think he is that lightning as well. You, a lot of people like to say when they have the big running back and the smaller running back, thunder and lightning in the backfield, all that stuff. He's our lightning. And when he touches the ball, good things happen. And he's fun as fuck to watch. Oh, so fun. So fun. So I'll, I'll say Emmett Johnson. Yeah. He's, I, to me, every, I, I can only picture him, like when I, when I say Emmett Johnson, the image in my head is teeth. him dancing. His teeth. Well, not his teeth, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was it for a long time. <laughs> but this season so far, it's been, he dances at the end of every play to get an extra yard, half yard, two yards out of it. Uh, he just he's doing the extra, mm -hmm. the extra that we're not seeing from really some fights. of the other backs in that in that room. But the one that I'm actually going to go to myself is going to shock a lot of people. Probably, <gasps> I'm removing the Thomas Faboni hands uh, stigma that I put on him in the off season. Um, I don't think he has been great by any means, but he's actually surprised me a little bit in that he has been. More of the athletic bill that we expected him. He had to a be slow start to the primarily. season. Yes, he did. But he's yeah. He he, especially actually in the Illinois game, I thought he was like if I had to pick somebody that wasn't Dylan Raiola that kept us in that game, it was Fedoni. Yep. Especially down the stretch, he made some pivotal catches. Um, he's doing a much better, in my opinion. I don't know if PFF grade outs would agree with this or not, but I think he's actually doing a much better job blocking this year than what we saw last year. Um, last year, it seemed almost as if he didn't want to block. Um, and this year, it, it just looks a lot better. The only other surprise especially, that I would, Especially his fake blocks that look so real. <laughs> the, the fake pass interference, you mean? Looks so real <laughs> that he gets called P.I. That's, on That's him. a hell of a block right he's, there. You know, he's a terrifying person back there, if you know what I mean. The one other one that I'm going to throw out there is just... I'm, I've been surprised at how good and under control Harburg looks when he's in the game. Regardless of where they're I playing. I honestly him. thought that's where you were going to go, where you were going to say it surprised people. I thought you were going to say Heinrich Harburg. Yeah, it's. I, wait, I mean, has the dude missed a throw yet? Nope. It's, he's, he's still 100% passing. They're, giving, they're, doing, <laughs> they're giving him everything easy, but you know what? The thing that I was terrified about, the extra packages and things of him coming on the field, I don't remember if I said this preseason or not, was he was still one of our biggest liabilities at dropping the ball or putting it in harm's way. And he hasn't done that so far this season. He really hasn't had the opportunity to. He's not been in. I mean, that he's much. probably got what fifteen touches on the season already. He has something seven carries. Yeah, but he's throwing the, he's throwing the ball for you know eight or ten times. He's, I don't know. He's at least eight for eight. Yeah, he's eight for eight for sixty nine yeah. yards. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah. Rushing, he would be seven carries for thirty three yards. I'm not, I'm not completely disagreeing with you. I just I don't think he's been out there enough to really. I'm Fuck saying up. he's surprising. That's that's all I was saying. That's all I was getting at. Uh, on 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 the uh, on the next thing that I was going to say was simply the surprising guy on the defense. And I'm going to go first so you don't steal it from me. John Bullock. For me, it, it's John Bullock. We talked in the preseason how, how excited we were in the fall for Javin Wright. Everything was stoked. Everything was lined up for him to come in and be a real leader on the defense. And then boom, he's down with his blood clot stuff and. It's terrible what he went through. It's awesome that he's already back, but you know what? John Bullock stepped into that role and has just absolutely blown the doors off of the place when it comes to anything that we expected him to do this year. It was a major surprise for me. Matt? Um, I'm, I'm trying to pick between two dudes that have really shown a lot, in my opinion, and I don't know. I guess I don't know who you're going to pick. For sure, so I almost want to go to not for you not to steal mine. Fine, <laughs> because he's he let me go first on the first two. You go ahead, okay? Because I have two and I can't decide. I'm gonna go with Sierra, right? That was one of them. Okay, that because was them. he was my number two. Because I mean, John Bullock surprised me because, and I I've said it a handful of times where preseason, like you just said, BJ, you know, I wasn't a hundred percent sold on John Bullock being the guy from the very beginning. I thought he was a good fill in guy, like he was last year, but absolutely. 
the dude's gone from yes. walk on fifth string safety to the, you know the story that was told on Chasing Three of you know Tony White said you know well, Rule came over to me and said why don't we try him at middle linebacker yep. and it's like you completely you changed a dude's life you changed a family's life yep. his brother's not going to make the NFL but no. you look at the way he's playing right now he absolutely looks like an NFL linebacker right now yeah um, I'm gonna go with Sierra right um, you know especially since you say surprise guy. Because we expected Tommy Hill to be the guy. And you have a guy like Sierra Wright who came in like the last week of July, first week of August. Like this, is, is, this isn't even a guy we even knew existed. I know you guys told me he was LeBron James's son on some stupid fucking movie that nobody gave a shit about. That I sure No one saw, knows what it means. That I sure as hell didn't go see and I never will. But this is a guy that came in super late to the program. And he has come in in you know, injury duty and doing what he's doing right now with where he's one of the best defensive backs. You, in just, the conference. you just give us the stats. What do yeah. the, the stats say? Uh, of the guys in the, in the big 10 who of the cornerbacks in the big 10 that have at least a hundred snaps, he is number five in pro football focus covered grades. He is tied for second with most pass breakups. Like this isn't a guy that started from day one or even played from day one. Yeah, he couldn't hardly get on the field the first two games. So it's like what he's been able to do in the limited amount of time uh, put in a pressure pack situation to take over for Tommy Hill is nothing short of astounding. He's not even just filling in. He's been taking over at that position. Yeah. And, and it, shutting dudes and it, down. I will tell you this. It speaks to not only his talent ability, but also, you know, we were kind of worried about the whole transition of defensive backs coach with Evan Cooper suddenly resigning and then John Butler the coming in there? and what John Butler has been able to do with these guys in, in particular, and then see right with the limited amount of time that he's had in this defense. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Can you agree more? Thing, yeah. He, he was one of my dudes. Yeah, I absolutely. He was uh, also one of my dudes. So but, I, I just wanted to throw out there real quick. If you go back, we did a, a show on see right when he actually came. <laughs> I was the only one that sat here and said, I think this guy's going to be a fucking stud. He's the highest rated. Uh, I just didn't think he would play much this year. He's the <laughs> highest graded scouted player out of high school that we have on our defensive side of the ball. Well, like the highest at, graded. Recruit. At least you're right about something ahead of time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, For those of you only listening, yeah. I just flipped Matt off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad, because I know you're listening too. Uh, Dad gets it. Um, so my other guy, it's not necessarily shocking that he's played so well. It's more shocking that he's kind of retaken the mantle of best D lineman on the team. Uh, and it's Ty Robinson. Uh, last year, it's not that he played poorly, but he was very overshadowed by what Nash was doing. Well, and for that, for those two, it was like first half of the season, one guy yep. dominated. Then the second half, it, it yeah, but, flipped. But, I mean, but, everybody, everybody wanted to talk about Nash, yep. and then they would want to talk about what he was doing in the off season with wrestling. Yep. And it was, it was very clear that he was kind of the number one dude coming into the season, at yeah. least in my, from what I could see. Um, and Ty Robinson's just kind of taken that mantle back there, and and it's not because Nash isn't playing well. Nope. Nash is doing all the same stuff he did last year, and Ty Robinson is doing better. He's getting double teamed, triple teamed, and he's still in the backfield. He has like what is it, four sacks yeah. so far on the season? Um, and he is just wrecking and fucking like shop. Four or five tackles for field. loss. Yes. Yeah. It, he's, he's playing better than we wanted him to last year, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And so that, to me, has been a very pleasant surprise. He's like, respectfully, polar bear, I'm nobody's number two. <laughs> respectfully, <laughs> I'm going to fuck some people up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> respectfully, I'm going to be disrespectful to yeah. these offenses yep. here. <laughs> and it's been really fun to watch. Yeah. So... I'm gonna. I, I I kept quiet there for a hot second because I'm gonna transition. Right, really, the, really hard for you to do. Right into the MVP conversation for the defensive side of the ball because I think that one of the things that is the most important on a defense for any defense out there, regardless of the style that you play, there has to be a Jared Crick to an Adamican Sue. There has to be a guy that is going to sacrifice the stats. For the good of the team, and that is exactly what Nash Hutmaker has been doing since day one this season. He is taking double and triple team every fucking time he is on the field. 
he's absolutely getting swallowed up by the offensive line and somehow still getting back to the quarterback every once in a while. The guy has been an absolute animal, and for that reason alone, he's my MVP on the defense. Makes sense. Yeah. It's hard to argue with. I, I think you can give Ty all the props in the world because he's making the flash plays, and he's the, you know, the, let's be real about life. Ty Robinson, in pads, looks like a supersized me he's middle linebacker. terrifying. He looks like a middle linebacker, but he's fucking 6'6", 320 pounds. Like, yeah. It's not fair, but you put that next to a he, guy he who's looks absorbing like, he looks two like or one three of guys players. off of that offensive line, and he's going to eat. If you don't eat, and if Jamari Butler doesn't eat, and if Cam Lenhart doesn't eat, it, then that means Nash isn't doing his job, and Nash is doing his job, so those dudes are getting there. Absolutely. Uh, as far as defensive MVP, again, the ob- for me, the obvious one is John Bullock. But I'm not going to go there because that's too much of an obvious pick. I, I th- go there though. No, we, we can give him the defensive. Yeah, yeah, I, I, but I, see, Jed, <laughs> you, you, for me, MVP is the most valuable player, and so you don't steer away from somebody just because they're Tom Brady. Well, I mean, we're kind of going to do that on the offense, but I get it. Uh, I I have to take my time to talk about my new man crush. <laughs> like, get on it, bro. This, this is get on it. it. Everybody, grab some coffee and probably a <laughs> towel. <laughs> let's let's go. I want to hear about this. No. My MVP is because he plays very limited snaps because he's mostly just a pass rusher. He has played 107 snaps. For instance, like with the Ty Robinson, he's played 270 snaps. This guy's played 107. Uh, Pass rushing snaps, he's played 90 or 83. Ty Robinson, 163. So he plays half or more than half of what Ty Robinson is doing. He has the same number of total pressures than that Ty Robinson has. They both have 20. They have the same number of sacks with four. He has more quarterback hits than Ty Robinson. And he is just behind Ty Robinson in quarterback hurries. James Williams, James Williams, James Williams. He is my MVP of this defense for the numbers that he's putting up and the limited amount of snaps that he's been able to play, the impact he's had, I think is imme- immeasurable. Fuck yeah! I dig it. You I dig make it. a mess this time. It's great. <laughs> well, no, but this side of the table is leaning. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so are you going John Bullock? Yeah. Lay it on. That's go fine. fucking That's John fine. Bullock. Lay it on us. He deserves he, the credit. He's That's the fine. leader of the defense. He's the leading tackler on the defense. He picks everybody up. He fucking gets me excited. Uh, I don't... <laughs> I, you, I don't know what you can't say about the dude. He's just, he's a phenomenal player. He's really pick, taken that, that leadership mantle this year. And I'm, he's, he's the quarterback of the defense. That's, that's what I'm taking. Mm-hmm. One other guy that I'll mention on that side of the ball, just because he deserves mentioning, uh, who is a dude we did a whole show on last offseason, not this past one, but two offseasons ago. MJ Sherman has played like I expected him to play um, coming from Georgia. Yeah, he is actually like I would say if you're talking MVP conversation, he's got to be close to top four, top five there mm-hmm. at least. Um, he he is and that's just because it's such a stacked. He area. is wreck shop, and he went from a guy who was struggling to make it into the rotation last year to being the the stalwart at the jack position. He's he's been really good. I I will say you know again just want to bring up another guy, Prince Will. He has played again limited snaps more than James Williams, but just limited snaps with 142 snaps. He has the uh, third most quarterback pressures or total pressures, and he has the second most quarterback hurries behind Ty Robinson. So, again, with the little amount that he's played, he's made an impact as well on the field. That's wild. Defense is looking great this year. Yeah. In in every facet. The offensive MVP. We'll let him go first. Again. (laughs) <laughs> I know the Tom Brady baby MVP. I'm not taking Dylan Riola because that's again that's the obvious one. I'm just saying, it, let's just talk about him for a minute. That's fine. Well, for, then we might as well go ahead and take him for me because that's who I'm taking. That's fine. That's fine. From, from you, you don't just not give it to him even though then, he's then the I guess best you go player first. on the offense. <laughs> yes. Well, I didn't know he was going to just cut you off there. <laughs> no, he's as a freshman putting up incredible numbers mm-hmm. for the first half of the year, and he's over 1,300 yards passing. He when he has to will run the ball. He isn't turning the ball over. He's protecting things. He's making the right decisions. He's getting rid of the ball when he needs to. 
outside of the last game, he's looked incredibly efficient on offense. In the last game, apparently there were hurricane-like winds by whomever the fuck said that in the stadium. Shiano. <laughs> yeah, whatever. The, the wind was weird, sure, but it wasn't like that. Yeah, I don't so think he, that bad. Especially as a freshman, and I'm just saying as a quarterback, not even as an 18-year-old quarterback, he looks great this year. He's, he's protecting the ball. He's leading the team. He's 23rd in the country in completions. He's 29th in the country in completion percentage. Um, as it sits, he's currently 28th in yards. This is out of all quarterbacks in Division One. This is not just freshmen. This is not just whatever. The dude is playing at a more than serviceable Nebraska quarterback level in an offense that is still new to him, in an offense that is still evolving with a run game that is really struggling to give him any sort of support, which everybody knows hurts the quarterback side of things. Um, and, I mean, he's he, the, the, biggest, the biggest thing that stands out to me is the decision-making with the football. He is doing an, ama- an amazing job of making sure that, I mean, yes, has he thrown three picks? One of them was a real pick. The other two, the wide receiver should have been more uh, more into it and probably could have won those battles and he'd have one pick on the season instead of three. Yep. Um, the Rutgers game was a bad one for him. It was an outlier, but prior to that, he was still top 30 in QBR in, the, in all of college football too. I mean, the, the guy is exceeding expectations at almost every level that we could possibly imagine, but the most important is that he's a net positive like we asked for. So he's my MVP. Jed? I'll give you that one. Jed, go be wrong somewhere else. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> After that, I I really can't say anybody else. Like, <laughs> who who were you going to say? No, honestly, I didn't really know because I kind of wanted you to go so I could try to come up with somebody else. <laughs> but nobody else has been consistent enough for me to really realistically say them. Even saying, okay, who's the second MVP? Because again, Dylan Real is number one. Nobody else has been consistent enough for me to really justifiably say somebody else. If I had to give it to somebody else, it would probably be Banks because he has been. The That's su- why I said consistent enough, though. But I think he's been consistent. He hasn't had the opportunities. Well, yeah, but I but- feel like he's been the security blanket. Whenever Raiola is struggling just a little bit in every game other than the Rutgers game, he's been the guy that, to get out there and really get get the job done for him. Sure, he doesn't have flashy stats, but like we talked about coming into the season. The dude had like some 800 or 900 yards on his career and like four of them were after the catch. Yeah. Like he he's just not you you know you gave Damn, me the stat like right yards, before. He, 2 yards a catch after after con, after he caught the ball or whatever, yeah. Yeah, and and like we talked about it before this show, he he has 40 or 41 total yards 40. after the catch on the season and 10 of them were on one play in the Rutgers game. Yeah. So the the guy's not he's not a flashy wide receiver, but he's a possession guy. And I think if you're going to give an MVP outside of what Dylan Royal has done, it's got to be that or maybe Ben Scott. Yeah, I say, but I can't even say that any of the any of the offensive linemen have played consistently no. enough. I would have said that another guy would be maybe Dowdell, but even that, like. It's uh, the last three weeks, though. I really That's couldn't give that to Dowdell. Nobody else has been consistent enough for me to justifiably say anybody. So, you know what? Screw it. Yeah, I'll go with D- Dylan Riola. My bad. You made a good <laughs> argument, Matt. Yeah. I, I was going to default to it anyway. I, I was going to default just, to it anyway. I, th- there's not, like I just it said. It doesn't mean that the other guys have played terribly. No, I'm, I'm just, not at all saying they it, played terribly. No, I, I know. I'm just saying, like. Nobody has played on a consistent basis, game by game. We've always had the one other guy, and then another guy in various games and various opportunities play, step up and play well. There's nobody that I can say game by game by game outside of Dylan Rayola that would be the offensive MVP. This is also he's a situation. the leader of the offense. Yeah, that is, he's the leader of the team. I think he 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 literally knows the playbook better than the offense. Yeah, yeah, which is why at. Game six, he feels comfortable enough to argue with the offensive coordinator about what plays are going to go. Well, and I think that's what we saw. On the coaching side of things, I do want to. I do want to grab one. I almost feel like we have to say disqualifier on Tony White, but I also yeah. think that if you asked that same question three weeks ago, following the Illinois game, we might not be talking about Tony White. But you already know who my assistant coach is going to be. Who's going to be? 
Dvorak, the linebacker coach. <laughs> <laughs> He's my favorite coach on the entire staff. Oh, like, I didn't <laughs> say favorite. I said, who's the MVP so I far? I would say Dvorak. You think so? Absolutely. That's... Again, we talked about the John Bullock stuff, what he's done with John Bullock from the very beginning, what he did with uh, having Javin Wright get injured and not be able to play, uh, having Mackay Bayer step up, having Stefan Thompson be able to step up. All those and they have not missed a that's beat what I'm from saying. last year. Yeah. Rob Dvorak's my guy. He, I completely agree with you. If I'm, I'm going to pick somebody else just because I want to talk about him, but Rob Dvorak is also my MVP. Yeah. If I had to pick somebody else, uh, it's Corey Campbell. And I, I say Corey Campbell from the simple fact that we are not dealing with a bunch of plaguing injuries mm-hmm. and nagging injuries and guys getting hurt for no reason like Illinois did during our game with them. Yeah. He has got this team fine tuned and mm-hmm. ready to play every week. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that one kind of, it's not just Corey Campbell. It's more like Corey Campbell and the strength and conditioning staff and the nutrition oh, absolutely. staff. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm with, what was that gal's he's name? He's the main dude. We Ms. talked about Ms. Kristen. Yeah. Miss Kristen. Yeah. You got you got to hand it to her oh, as wait, well. If we bring her up, then people say, "Oh, well, you're bringing up the nutritionist. You're fucking stupid." Okay, cool. Anyway, I'm just saying, like, you're just mad you don't know who healthy, she is, <laughs> and I love it. Vorchek's still my MVP, yeah. but I, it had to be said they're they're doing a great job these first. Six and, and with the way we with the way the whole Sierra Wright stuff and everything else happened, I would also put John Butler up there too because of what he's been able to do with having these guys step up in situations that they weren't necessarily prepared for. I think John Butler's doing a really good job, too, but Dvorak's my guy. Especially on limited time with the team. You know, not to get sidetracked, because this is a superlative show, but did you happen to notice late in that game when uh, Tony White and John Butler got together with Matt Rule on the sideline and it looked like they were discussing what to do in a timeout situation? I think on third down against Rutgers, they were they were kind of getting into our, deep into our side. John Butler went off and he was yap, 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 yap. And, and Tony White just said, okay. And he looked at Rule and they said, okay. And they went on with it. I think it's really cool because he did give him that co-defensive coordinator title. That it, it that was the first time I've seen it, at least where it looked like, okay, that looks like co-defensive coordinators talking something out. Well, whether it's co-defensive coordinators talking something out or just I have respect for you and what you have to say and your football knowledge and we're good to <laughs> yeah. go. Hey, by and the way, also, this is what we would have done on the Bills last year. <laughs> what, what you're saying makes absolute fucking yeah. sense yes. and it clearly worked. Yep. So I I will I I do have to just say for a second that Tony White, in my opinion, is very clearly the staff MVP, um, just simply from the fact that not only have we seen the defense continue to maintain, like you said, they should have taken a, st- a step back statistically, and they haven't. They're just as good, if not more dominant, than they were last season. Um, and we have seen some turmoil through a couple of games and him right the ship. You have to be able to give him that. Um, I think a couple of runner-ups, in my opinion, have to be the dudes on both sides of the line. Um, specifically, Terrence Knighton. The the guy has decided he's created death row defensive line. Um, I don't know if that's <laughs> really a throw to death row records <laughs> yes, or what it is. It is. Oh, yeah. But it is it's so cool to see, you know, we we've we've heard about and talked about a lot. It's been talked about a lot, the family atmosphere and the family, the brotherhood that it is to be an offensive lineman. He's done the same thing on the defensive line on the side of the ball. And like I just talked about early in the show, it, it wasn't Two or three years ago, you were talking about how scared you were of some of the same dudes that are playing on this defensive line right now. And maybe this is a hangover from last year, what he did too. But you don't get the type of play you're getting out of our back end and the type of play you're getting out of our middle linebackers if you don't have the type of play you're getting from that defensive line. Mm -hmm. He has established a culture that is going to bring in top-tier talent to Nebraska on the defensive line side of the ball. As long as we can keep him, we have to fucking keep him. I don't care what it costs. He has to be a dude. I think that he is a 100% rule guy. I think he has become a 100% Tony White guy. The mesh that they got with that group is just absolutely insane. Yeah, whenever Tony White leaves, you better not take Terrence Knight with you. (laughs) Don't do it, dick. Also, don't take Dvorak with you either. (laughs) Another reason why don't take anybody. I already love just leave I, again. I've or don't. Lo- I've loved Dvorak from the very beginning, but also I have to say Dvorak too because I know Papa Shavers thinks Dvorak's like the best coach in the entire country. So that was for you too. <laughs> uh, to give a little, to give a little on the other Riola though, I think that the even, other Riola. Even, 
Uncle. He has a fucking name. No, I know that. Donnie. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm calling the other Rilo because everybody's talking about no, Dylan it's, constantly. It's, no, I, I I think that even though they've they've struggled at times throughout this season, and they're definitely struggling in the in the run game a little bit, they've played really well. I think, especially when you factor that they lost their left tackle, now they've lost their their second string left tackle. They're dealing with whatever the fuck's happening with Mizuka, um, and yet Tape him he's up. he's keeping it together, mm-hmm. and so. You have to give some to that because uh, a, fr- a true freshman quarterback doesn't do the things Dylan Ryle is doing if he doesn't have a good offensive line. And we can talk about the run offense all we want to as far as how it needs to be better, and it obviously does, but their pass blocking is really good. He has so tremendous. much time back so, there. So tremendous. Like, he, he, may, may, maybe, it helps uh, that he makes the right decisions. Maybe, yeah. he, uh, maybe he just had family in mind and really put an emphasis on pass blocking to make sure <laughs> yeah. that his nephew was okay <laughs> yeah. all year. Yeah. Whatever it is, the... the Dylan Rayola has a ton of time back there, and the mm-hmm. pass blocking yeah. has been pretty phenomenal. Yep. Let us know what you think of all these. Put in the drop in the comments. What was what was your most surprising, you know, bummer person for the first half? And give us all these for the second half. Or we 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 would really like to know who you expect to be the end of season guys in these because, with the exception of Dylan Rayola and Tony White, I don't know that we're going to say the same thing for the rest of it. Uh, I think James Williams is going to be still be my guy. <laughs> James Williams is going to be head of the NFL draft at the end of this, based on what Jed says. First round pick. Well, well, when the Titan, when enough, the Titans yeah. only have when the Titans only have one win and they have the number one pick, I'm going to say take James Williams. Take James Williams, <laughs> he's the guy. <laughs> Even though I could probably get him as an undraft free agent. <laughs> Good shit. We love you guys. Look for the second half preview coming up tomorrow. And this. Maybe the most unbelievable night in Cornhusker football history.